Well, how's it going today, guys? Hope everybody's having a good one. So, what's going on? Well, that's what's going on. We're cutting what's supposed to be green feed and has turned into a almost a yellow feed. But there's a bunch of alfalfa in here and that's why I wanted to cut it with the hay bind, but we're losing too much grain. I don't know what the right thing to do is here. You guys tell me because of the alfalfa in here, do I cut it with a swath or do I cut it with a hay bind? I don't know. I don't know what's right or what's wrong, but I know I'm losing probably close to 50% of our kernel. So this way I'm still going to lose some kernel when we go and bale, but I'm not going to lose as much. Even if I only lost 10% or 20%, the kernel will still be in the bales. But so far, she seems to be working good. We got this thing fired up here this morning, got it out to the field, in transport. That's a bit of a gong show. You gotta pull this tire, pull that tire, put that tire around to one side, pull this other tire and put it around back, give that one half a turn, like, then stretch out the hitch and blah, 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 yeah. So, but we're basically cutting here at, uh, I'm not taking the full table, which is 25 feet. We're taking, basically, we're taking, what are we taking? Well, uh, about 22. Hopefully this stuff will dry down okay and we won't have too many issues. Anywho, that's what's going on. I'll bring you all back a little bit later. Alrighty guys, she's been an adventure so far. Uh, these sloughs out here on this end are pretty much done. Blue three sickles and on this machine, you uh, it's not bolt on sickles, it's rivets. So if I break another one, I'll try to video that for all you young guys that don't know what the hell that means. Because I'm sure there's quite a few people out there that haven't got a sniff of what it's like to change a sickle with a riveting tool. Anyways. But every time I stop, there's alfalfa down there. Whew, she's a warm one. Also blew the drive belt. Popped the drive belt off two times. And I'm not 100% sure as to why. Is it because the belt is old and it's stretching? Or is it because I had a bunch of green crap in there and it got behind the belt and... Uh, popped it off. Also had to tighten up the reel belt, the belt that drives the reel, because it was hesitating and stopping. So yeah, she's been a friggin' adventure, let me tell you. It's the first time I've ever tried cutting green feed slash hay with a swather. And it's all working out okay. Like, once you get going, it's not bad. But when you break down, well, then that sucks, obviously. But what do you do, right? What do you do? If I pop the belt off the knife drive again, I'll bring you guys back for that also. Uh, we're about half done, so I really want to get this friggin' field all cut down here today. That's the plan, anyways. Anyway, I'm gonna let you go. We'll talk to you later. Well, there it is. That piece is all done. Right in the very front, I got a little corner that has to get done yet. But other than that, 
like about 10 or 15 minutes worth of cutting other than that everything is cut that's going to get cut out here there's the odd spot where there's a little bit of this or that standing but like right here by this uh, tree line whatever it can friggin stay there hopefully this all works out for the best for us anywho I'm gonna let you guys go and we'll finish cutting that stuff up in the very front and then we'll see what happens after that I got a feeling quite possibly uh, unhook this swather leave it out here and then I'll be taking this tractor home fueling it up and getting them hooked to a hay bind for green feed oats which is still green alrighty talk to y'all later there he goes can't see him now big old bull moose out there still in velvet he just ran into that bush I'll see if I can drop a pick. I did get a couple picks of him. <clears throat> he didn't look too bad. There you go, Tris. Fall shot is coming up. Let's get home, guys. Alrighty, guys. Well, there it is. That's the older machine, the beat up one. Sorry, I'm a little freaking scruffy. I could use a shave right now, that's for sure. But anyway, uh, 6 o'clock. We're heading to our east land, our east farm, east of town. It's about an 8-mile drive. So, got home and filled this big blue up and went over to hook up the machine and lo and behold, two freaking pigs were out of course my cows don't get out but the goddamn pigs get out what the hell they pushed a bunch of dead grass up against that electric net and the little bastards crawled underneath the net <laughs> they're getting smart anyway let's get the hell to that field and see what it's going to be like we'll talk to you later Alrighty guys, well we're out here. This is it. Now this hasn't been fertilized in two years. It wasn't fertilized this year, it wasn't fertilized last year, it was fertilized the year before last year. And it has not been sprayed. Now that's why we got so much thistle here. But we did seed this sucker down to uh, uh, a, a grass pasture grass alfalfa grass blend it's uh, heavier on the grass than it is on the alfalfa uh, that's what the landowner wanted here and that's what she looks like like there's a pretty good swath coming out the back end I don't know if it's as good as it was last year but hey it looks pretty good to me. It's way better than what my barley is that we just got done cutting. I'll say that much. Anywho, I'm going to keep on chugging along here. We just got in the field. You can see that bin way back there. That's the, where the field starts. So we're going to work at getting this sucker all cut down. It ain't going to happen all today. But I'll try and get a couple rounds done here today. It takes like an hour to do one round. So I'll let you guys go. And uh, we'll talk to y'all later. Well, I missed them. Darn it. There was a couple of deer crossing through there. And they were just walking. And all I could see was their head sticking up above the, above the crop. Outside on the outside edge in every low spot. It's like what the fuck fucking foxtail 
Never had it last year, but it sure came in this year. Jump and Jiminy's. And thistle. We got a lot of thistle this year in here. But like I said before, this stuff wasn't sprayed this year. And it was seeded all down to grass alfalfa mix. And so take the good with the bad and hope for the best. And on average, it's looking pretty good still. And from what I can tell, there's alfalfa coming through it all. We've got a pretty good swath for only 14 feet, so... Anywho, I'm going to keep on buzzing along here. Oh, good morning everyone. How's it all going today? Hope everybody's having a good day. What the hell are we doing? Oh, we're in big blue here. The wind is up actually a little bit. And uh, you guys saw me cutting last night. I uh, got one round done and then CP showed up at the field and I knew I'd never finish a second round without doing it in the dark and it's no fun cutting in the dark in that field you're zigzagging this way that way every which way so uh, we said to hell with it and we were gonna go out there with the other tractor and haybine today but I get up this morning and now they're calling for friggin rain thunderstorms to start this afternoon about 3 2 30 3 o'clock Last until like 10 o'clock tonight, thunderstorms, then shower activity from basically 10 p.m. until 5 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. It's like, what the hell? We were hoping to get out there and get everything cut uh, today on that field and then uh, bail everything off tomorrow what's bailable so I just checked a bunch of uh, hay in those water runs that we have down and uh, she's borderline like real borderline but we're gonna bail it anyway I don't need more rain on it anyway something I want to talk about here somebody sent me a friggin friend request and to join their group on Facebook and I asked, well, what the hell's the group about? And well, basically it's a farm stress line. A farm stress group or some damn thing like that. And when it comes to that kind of stuff, I'm a little bit old school. And I told the guy directly via private messenger, because that's how he asked me to join his group was through private messenger on Facebook. I told the guy I'm a little bit old school and if you can't handle the stress of farming, maybe you shouldn't be in it. That's kind of how I feel. I'm not saying that it ain't stressful. I'm not saying that you can't handle stress. You guys have all heard me stressing on and off all year long about the shit that's been going on around our place. But we wake up each morning, we put a happy face on if we can, we get out there and we try and accomplish something every day. If you're in that bad a shape that you need a shrink because you can't handle the stress that you're going through with your farm, well, I'm sorry, that farm is going to kill you and maybe you should get out of it. That's what I'm talking about. So then last night, I'm going through some comments and somebody left me a comment that's no way to talk if you can't handle the stress to get out of farming. Well, if you're stressed that bad that you can't get a, get out there every morning and accomplish something, even if it's just a small thing, grease a friggin' baler, grease the combine. I don't know. Fix some fence. If you can't accomplish something every day on your farm, 
and you're stressed that bad that it's keeping you bedridden or couch ridden or something like that, then I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe you should get out of it. Farming is a very stressful job. Farming is a very low paying job for the hours and the stress that all of us guys go through as farmers. We definitely do not get paid enough, especially in the cattle sector. So, I might be pissing a few guys off here with saying this, but that's just how I feel. If you guys need a shrink because you're stressed too bad, maybe you're in the wrong occupation. Because believe me, if you were stressed that bad at a regular eight to five or eight to eight or whatever job where you're getting paid by the hour, you obviously wouldn't stick with it, right? you would switch and go to a different company or change professions. Well, in this situation, farming is no different. You can change professions. If you can't change professions, then leave the farm and go work for a farmer. There's some big ass farmers out there and they're always looking for good workers. And maybe that's what a guy needs to do if he's stressed that bad over his own farm. Just my own two cents. You guys don't like my own two cents? I'm sorry, but like I said earlier, I'm a little bit old school thoughts here. I've got people that I'm related to that say, oh, we're stressed too bad and it's all causing major depression and now they're going and they're taking freaking drugs for it. They don't even, they, they just started. They haven't got a sniff of what's yet to come. And they're saying it wasn't that hard for us. They obviously don't remember what it was like for us when CP and I started farming. Anyways, that's my own two cents. Drugs are not gonna fix the freaking problem. It's gonna make it worse in the long term so but that's what this freaking day and age has come to drugs 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 take more drugs sometimes they're prescription drugs sometimes they're not but regardless drugs are not going to fix your problem if you're uh depressed really bad and you're on drugs for it you got to figure out what is causing that depression and then go from there because the drugs are not going to fix the depression might take those not so great feelings away for a little while but what do you do when the drug wears off take more drugs it's just a freaking gimmick to get you to take more drugs before you know it you can't freaking do nothing because you're too damn drugged out piss off fly i'm trying to talk here so it's my own two cents guys some people might agree with me, some people won't agree with me. You can't make everybody happy, but to the person that made the comment on the video yesterday that I posted yesterday, I don't recall saying anything about if you can't handle the stress, get out of farming in the video. And he just threw that comment out there with me, at me, on my video. So here's your reply. Seriously, if you're one of those guys and you're taking drugs because you're stressed to the nines about your farm, drop the drugs, drop the farm. If you don't know anything else, go work for a farmer because he will pay good employees. They pay. They might not be paying 50 bucks an hour or something stupid like that, but hey, they pay. One way or the other, they will pay you. Or maybe that's what the guy needs to do. Anyways, again, I'll let you guys go. We're going to go get some bailing done. And yeah, I'm stressed. But hey, life goes on. Tomorrow's another day. And let's see what we can accomplish today, right? Fun, fun, fun. Let's get her done. We'll catch you all later. Alrighty, guys. Well... 
I did as much bailing as I can do. That stuff that's still sitting there is, uh, some of it's actually sitting in water a little bit right now. But everything got bailed up. We made like friggin' 70 bales or some stupid thing like that. So that's all right. Some of them are definitely tough, like real tough. Probably shouldn't have been bailed, but how long do you leave it sit for? Especially when there's a risk of more rain coming. Um, just want to say something about what I was saying earlier about the stress of farming and stuff. Like, yeah, there's lots of there's lots of places to get help if a guy needs it, and in some cases. A little bit of help is okay, but farming is stressful, so you got to decide, is this for you or not? Is this farming thing, ranching thing, are you cut out to do it? Simple as that. She's a tough one. She can be really tough. I, I got family that farms down in the south slash southwest part of the province. And they got total opposite problem as, as I do. Like there it's really dry, shitty crops, poor yielding crops. And to top all of that off, they're getting hammered with hoppers like you wouldn't believe. When they run the combine through the fields, they're uncertain if they're combining friggin' crop or if they're combining friggin' hoppers. The... Uh, grasshoppers are just incredible so that's stressful like farming can be really bad for anybody that's thinking about getting into it you really got to sit down and ask yourself are you prepared for the stress that you're going to go through as a farmer like you got to worry about getting the crop in on time you got to worry about getting the crop off in time you got to worry about getting that crop off dry. Sure, there's grain dryers out there and everything that'll help you, but you gotta worry about getting the crop off dry. As dry as you can get it anyways. Um, you worry about the great white combine. I'm talking hail. If you got a good crop, you could be guaranteed that's the crop that's gonna get hit with hail. You gotta worry about hoppers. Sure, you can spray for hoppers if you're, if you got the finances to do that, but still it's it's something to be worried about right uh you gotta worry about weed infestations and getting chemical and the cost of farming right now is just unbelievable uh the inputs at this point like for me far out out seed the the gross return or net return uh, you gotta worry about your cattle, your livestock. I don't care if it's cows, chickens, pigs. It don't matter. You gotta worry about are those animals. You gotta are those animals ha healthy? Are they reproductive type animals? Are they producing for you what you need them to produce? If not, what do you do to change it? Uh, you gotta be prepared to take on that stress load. And it's a lot of worrying type things. So, anyways, I know I'm going to get a lot of flack over this, I'm sure. But I'm just laying it all out there. Like, some of my thoughts in my brain go back to old school. The farmers and ranchers that made this country, they worked their asses off for to make this country what it is. To make this country a free country. And the work they did by hand and with horses is nothing. Like what we do now is nothing for workload, is nothing compared to what they did back then. Imagine being out here harvesting one of these fields like right here beside me, cutting that down with, with a scythe, bundling that crop up, and then 
pitchforking it onto a wagon that's pulled by horses to uh, some old thrashing machine that's stationary in the field. Like That's basically what they did. It was cut by hand. Like, something like that right there. It was cut by hand. Like, that's what we do now with swathers and so on and so forth is nothing compared to what the people back in the day in the early 1900s went through to make this country what it is. Uh, cutting bush down and plowing bush, all done with ancient old, old equipment. Back then, that was the equipment they had. That was dream come true. Big old tractors and stuff. But that's all I really got to say, guys. So give us the old thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and fun, fun, fun. Let's get her done. Later.